With me now, Ukraine's ambassador to Canada, Yulia Kovalev, and Canada's ambassador to Ukraine, Larissa Galadza. Ambassador, such a pleasure to have you on the program today, and, and together especially. Thank you very much for making the time. Uh, ambassador Kovalev, I'm going to start with you, and, and I wanted to start off with the, the significant announcement this week. Uh, from your perspective, how valuable will that uh, missile defense system be, and when do you expect to receive it? Yes, Vashi, this uh, week was, uh, I would say, the breaking decision for uh, Canadian government, which we value a lot, to provide us with one of the best uh, air defense systems, NASAMS, to Ukraine. Uh, and why it's so important? I just came back over 10 days ago from Kiev, uh, which was without electricity without heating and many hours people were sitting in a dark cold uh, apartments and that's uh, because of uh, massive russian attacks over the critical infrastructure so russian missiles flew over 18 times within the last uh, uh, months over ukrainian cities and heating and destroying the critical infrastructure and the air defense systems is critical for us first of all to protect civilians to protect those infrastructure and to be able both to repair and provide people with the basic needs like electricity like clean water like the heating in the cold winter and this air defense system will help us to secure this critical infrastructure it's very valuable for us we do appreciate and welcome and are grateful for that decision of canadian government and now we are in the process of uh, and i do hope in coming weeks or, or probably a month that this will be already in ukraine Ambassador Galadza, uh, from, from, from where you sit, you're, you're living through the impact of those missiles on critical infrastructure. Uh, why, from your vantage point, would a you know, missile defense system, particularly the defense part of that, be important? Um, it's, it's as Ambassador Kovalev has, has said, when Russia shoots missiles and sends drones into Ukraine, they are not going after military targets. They're going after civilian targets. Um, they are hitting the power generation plants, the power transmission lines, uh, and, and the other infrastructure that keeps people warm uh, and with water. Um, and they're doing it in, in all the major uh, cities uh, of the country. So I don't experience them hitting just the, the transmission centers not far from where I live. I hear the air defenses going off above, uh, above where I live. Um, these are critical systems to keeping civilians safe. We're very lucky in Cave. We've got a good air defense system here. But I just came from the western part of the country, and, uh, and they need more of this. Uh, so this is extremely timely, and it is an excellent system. We've all, Canada has always provided what Ukraine says it needs. Uh, this has been at the top of the list for, for a while, and, uh, and it's great uh, that we are providing a system that Ukraine already has, knows how to, how to use, and and that has been proven as, as really effective in downing the rockets that come this way. And Ambassador Galadza, just a quick follow-up. Do, do you have any sense of how soon it could arrive in Ukraine? I, that's a that's a, a question for the national defense, but, <laughs> but really it should be as soon as it should be as soon as possible. Uh, Ambassador Galadza referred Ambassador Kovalev to uh, this being at the top of the list, and for many many months throughout the near you know 11 months this war has been going on. Uh, we kept hearing about the ask for air defense systems. Is it moving now also to tanks? Uh, that, that in, in other discussions I've had, that seems to be the priority, especially where European allies are concerned. Of, yes, and the tanks, and we have been discussing with all of our partners who are helping and supplying us with the weapons about the tanks, about the armored vehicles. And actually the good news are coming with the last three weeks, I would say, including the uh, decision to provide Ukraine with the Patriots. It's also the uh, important air defense system. Um, the announcement uh, from the Polish president when he was visiting Lviv mm -hmm. uh, that Poland will provide Ukraine the Leopard tanks. And of course, the tanks and the armed vehicles are now on the top priority list together with the air defense. And I'll just explain you why, because um, there is a risk that Russia uh, will try to do the attempt of their offensive operation in the coming months. And what we also are seeing uh, in Bakhmut, in Solidar, um, Russia is losing a lot of their equipment, a lot of their soldiers, but we are also losing 
too. Um, and as we used more Soviet style tanks, um, the replacement, as we see, it should be with the NATO standard tanks. And mainly, uh, we are talking about the Leopard tanks. It, that's a, it, it's a long list, uh, Ambassador Galadza, that, that Ukraine still has needs around. And so I wondered for, you know, I, I'm guessing a lot of Canadians, I think this brings us to $1.5 billion in just military aid, well over two in military and humanitarian aid. And in no way do I mean to intimate there should be, but is there a ceiling to the amount of Canadian aid uh, that from your perspective, this country is willing to provide Ukraine? From the very beginning of the war, we've been providing Ukraine with first the equipment that we had in our own stockpiles, whether that was humanitarian assistance or um, or, or ammunition or you know winter gear, uh, always trying to provide what Ukrainians need. I think it's very clear from everything that the prime minister has said that we're standing by Ukraine for as long as we need to. Uh, and so uh, and, and so this this will continue. We're always in conversation. We are always in listening mode and we're always. Uh, working closely with our allies to make sure that we, uh, we we support Ukraine, and I think what we see right now is moving. There's there's a there's a new momentum to what allies are providing uh, to Ukraine, and Canada is absolutely a part of that. Is it your sense, Ambassador Kovalev, that there is a new momentum? Um, yes. What we and uh, what what I've just uh, mentioned to you yeah. that. Uh, we see more and more um, equipment and more and more uh, weapons that if we come back like a few months ago, uh, there was no go for many of those types. What changed, do you think? Um, I think there are two of the things. First, um, uh, that is the everybody understood that when Ukraine liberated Kharkiv region, when Ukraine liberated Kherson, so that Ukraine is not only capable to defend and the hold the line, but Ukraine is cap capable also to liberate the territories. And the main thing that Ukraine needs for doing this and for going on uh, to liberating the territories is it, the weapons. The second thing is also this momentum on understanding what is also um, happening in Russia as we see they are losing uh, on the battlefield. They are trying uh, Putin to removed her. Sorry, no, he removed his yeah. top general, this general Armageddon. He's gone. What does that say? Uh, it's saying that there is nothing good inside the Russian army because if the things are good, you have the management who is uh, uh, in charge of these operations, uh, they are moving because they are losing. They've lost uh, a lot of stuff during the uh, last few months. Um, they made a lot of this uh, attacks on the civilian infrastructure. Yes, it's very painful for us, but Russia just spent a lot of their um, uh, stock of the rockets with no success as they wish to. So they are failing on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, and they are trying uh, to send some messages to their own population because more and more Russian people uh, are asking the question, what's the military operation for? And uh, was this new conscript of 300,000 uh, 300, of the new uh, conscripts, unfortunately, because they were poor equipped and lucky for us, poor equipped, uh, poorly trained. A lot of them just lost their lives within the first weeks on the battlefield. A Ambassador Glads, I just have a few seconds left, but I wanted to get your sense in the middle of it all there. Uh, do, do you feel that momentum has shift in particular uh, with the removal of that top general? He was just appointed three months ago. To remove the commander of your war effort after three months is a pretty uh, damning sign. Uh, he didn't achieve what uh, what Putin wanted him to achieve, and he's gone now. Uh, that transition has a cost. Uh, and uh, and I think that uh, I think that 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 that's a really strong signal to Ukraine and to Ukraine's mm -hmm. partners um, that uh, that that Ukraine is doing something right. Okay. On that note, I'll leave it there. Ambassadors Galadza and Kovalev, thank you very much for making the time for this. Thank you.